Hello and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. This is my little apartment fish room. And I thought since it's Friday, I will continue Fish Fan Friday and kind of give an update on my tanks. Fish rooms definitely over time go through changes. And there's a lot of changes going on here, especially because I breed fish for my local fish club. So there's fish kind of coming and going, being rotated. Lilfoot's gonna be really needy as always. Oh, she got offended, she left. But oh, why don't we just start over here? So this area right here is hopefully going to get redone. I might uh, have a little different rack set up here because I can only fit two tanks here at the moment. I would like to move this tank right here over here so that way I can free up this space for plants, just my, my plants. It could be my little plant corner. And that way this can be a full fish corner. I might have to move this tank up here because the dividers need space so you can remove them. Uh, I have my wild beta mahachai males growing out up here in their jars before they get sold. So it's like their temporary setup. And then right here, oh my gosh, the reflections are horrible. But we have my divided beta set up, which is kind of looking boring because I knew I was going to tear down this tank and move it. When I do it, I was going to like clean it up and make it all fancy and pretty and start over. So I kind of didn't do a whole lot besides feeding these guys and keeping up with the water changes. There's nothing that interesting happening. So we've got my male, female, male, female, male at the moment kind of chilling right here. Uh, sometimes I hear people say that you can't keep males and females in a divided tank because they get egg bound. Uh, I've actually experienced the opposite. I've noticed that whenever you put a male and female together in a divided tank, the female will only be really eggy at the beginning, but later on she will stop producing eggs. And as you can see, both my females are actually quite on the thinner side because of that, because they'll start just reabsorbing those eggs because they realize even though the males are present, they're not going to breed. So I think that is somewhat in my case, kind of debunked that you can't keep them together as long as, you know, they're separated by dividers. The downside, though, is if you're keeping fish that you would like to potentially breed in the future, I did notice it's harder to condition the females to get eggy again if they are living in a divided setup. So it's just something interesting to think about. I would want to get into uh, beta videos a bit more soon. So there's going to be a lot more beta content coming up. Don't worry about that. Over here, we have the black water setup with the Epistogramma cockatooties double red, as well as the albino longfin bristlenose plecos, and some endler live bears. I'm thinking about maybe moving the endlers out so I can breed them, and then I would like to update this tank so it can kind of look really cool. Uh, the stuff that I would like to put in here will be a secret, but I did get a my aquarium box that I'm going to be unboxing. Probably maybe the next video or the video after that, so stay tuned for that because that will allow me to get more materials to really work on my black water, very naturalistic setup. And then over here, I'm going to just kind of briefly go over what's going on here because nothing too interesting is happening. We have the Baramaha Chai, mostly females, in the grow out right here. The water level is lower just to prevent them uh, from jumping. There are a few more males that I need to pull from here, but it's mostly females. This is my temporary holding tank, so right now I just have a few guppies in there to keep the cycle going. But if I ever need a tank for some reason, I can always move the guppies out and I have a tank available. And it's got some fake plants in here, so it's kind of what's going on up there. I am going to be working on these two tanks. Uh, this one is in the process of getting redone. I actually took out all of the old gravel and I'm replacing it with some new, just simple black gravel because I used to use uh, clay at the bottom of my tanks and the downside is it just created a mess every time I moved something, uh, even though the plants were really benefiting from it. So this is going to get redone. Sunny is still in there somewhere. Where are you? Sunny has been really enjoying the the jungle veil that is kind of floating up here temporarily. And he's been either hiding in it or he just chills in the bottom somewhere. Oh, actually, I think he's, seen, yeah, he's taking a nap. Right, right there. Yep. So he'll come out probably in a bit. 
But he's napping. He's kind of becoming an old guy, but he's doing well. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I know him. He just takes his little naps either at the top or the bottom. And then he comes out. He is a veil tail. And he lives in this entire 20 gallon tall with a couple male endlers and a tiny little baby bristle nose pleco. So there's not much in here. This tank is very understocked at the moment. And then this is my guppy random breeding tank slash um, orange pumpkin shrimp cull tank. And in here, I would like to redo this tank. I just haven't figured out how I want to do it yet. Um, I have started removing the duckweed and moving it over into the um, jalo tank, the Placidochromus jalo, because it actually will eat the uh, duckweed. So this duckweed, this pile that's right there is going to be gone by tomorrow. So they enjoy kind of getting some uh, little greens in their diet. So the problem with this tank was the duckweed kind of got crazy and it was kind of choking the light from the rest of the plant. So the plants were not getting that much light. So I'm hoping that I'm going to be fixing that and I'm going to try to make both of these tanks duckweed free tanks as much as possible. Uh, down here we just have some fry growing out. We have the Ninacara. Over here we have the Julie Chromis uh, Regani. And then these guys look like Julia Chromis, but they're not. Um, I forgot the name. I have it written down in my notebook, but these are a new group I acquired that I'm growing out. So this is their kind of like a very simple bare minimum grow out setup. Over here, um, it doesn't look too great because the light is broken. So this light used to actually be on top of this tank, but uh, over time, while well, it was on here, it just it just broke. It was a very cheap night crew light. I, I like using them because they're very affordable budget lights. The downside is they do break easily. So I moved it down here because Daniel tried to repair it and for a few days it worked and then it stopped working again. And I moved the light that was down here, up here. And at the moment, I just still have it hanging. I probably have to throw it out. And I have a spare light from here. So I'm like playing light Tetris. So that I put over here so that way this whole area is not too dark. This tank is so close to the window right now that there's no plants inside anyway. So I figure it doesn't matter. It doesn't have a light. It doesn't really need light. So it's using natural sunlight at the moment. And then I've discovered something interesting with this particular light. Um, let's see if I can read the brand if it's on here. Oh, I can't see it. Oh, I'll have to find out so I can tell you what kind this is. But when this light used to be down here, I used to have constant algae problems down here. And it was a really big pain in the butt. And I kept experimenting. I kept adding so many pothos plants and all these things, like messing around with the amount of time that uh, the lights were on and feeding the fish and just all so many things and what happened is as soon as I moved this light up here this tank started getting a lot of algae growth as you can see it looks kind of greenish and I've reduced the light to four hours a day now because there's no plants in here so it's just on for four hours a day so I can just see my fish a little better and then down here after I moved the light, like the, the algae issue started going away. So I can kind of, you know, put the two to, together that the culprit is the light. So my plan is I'll probably have to order another night crew light to have over here. And then I'll have to get another one for here. And then what I'm going to do with this light, because I don't like not using things or having things go to waste, is... Right here is going to be my future plant area. Some of the plants that I have to bring in. Oh, Littlefoot's so cute. But some of the plants I have to bring in for the winter, they kind of hang out here. But I don't actually get a lot of light in my apartment during the winter. We only get about like maybe five hours at most. It's usually a little less maybe. Um, so the plants, you know, some of these plants do well, but some of the plants that were outside all summer struggle, especially my lemon trees. So I think I might use this light to light up, like, put it above right here, and they'll, I'll have my plants over here, and I'll kind of give them a few hours of extra lights. And this light will be my future grow light. I think that would be a pretty good solution. Uh, let's see, did I forget anybody? So this is kind of my area right here. I guess I should go up here and show you the Shelly's. The Maltese are doing really well. Uh, I don't. I think they kind of like 
the natural light. I, I mean, I definitely personally like looking at fish in natural lighting. I think it looks nicer that way. But I am going to probably be moving them to a different location. And we just got the colony going. They're just breeding over here. And then we have a little foot. Yes, thank you for your commentary. It is very helpful. Thank you for meowing through my whole video. It wouldn't be the same without you. But um, over here is my little dehumidifier that I just turned off for the video. And I guess we could finish off with my uh, two little nano tanks. Well, they're not mine. They're Daniel's tanks. So we had a cool thing and a bad thing happen. The good thing is we got the algae issue that we had earlier this year under control. And now things are doing really well. And the orange pumpkin shrimp are really happy. The downside is we did lose the Blue Dream Shrimp at the moment. I think it was just much too hot in my fish room for these guys. And Rob keeps his fish like in the 60s. So it's just, I think the, the jump of the temperature was much too high. Even though they were uh, temperature acclimated to the new temperature of the tank, I think that might have been the culprit because sometimes... You don't want to keep your shrimp in like roughly 80 degree temperature, but because my fish room gets pretty hot, sometimes these tanks do get up to 80 degrees. And these guys, you know, they've been in here for a few generations, the orange pumpkins, so they do well in handling the heat. But these guys do not, so I am going to kind of, I don't know, leave this tank alone for the most part. Uh, I do have some snails in here. Uh, there's one beautiful ram's horn snails that I think I got from Lucas Brett's LR Brett's Aquatics because he gave me some plants and then magically I had a beautiful ram's horn snail. So I think it might be from him, but um, I'm just going to leave it alone. I might put a bed on here temporarily, one of the beds I have, kind of, you know, give them an upgrade and let them hang out in here. And then I would like to get the Blue Dreams again, but I'm going to wait till maybe the fall when things start to cool off in here and my fish room doesn't spike up sometimes and get really hot during heat waves. And this way, it'll allow the shrimp to kind of acclimate slower and, you know, go through the colder months and, you know, breed. And as they reproduce, they should, in theory, kind of adjust to my slightly hotter fish room. Uh, if I had a choice, you know, I would maybe do a separate setup with shrimp in a colder room if I had the space in the future. It's definitely something to think about. Over here are my little plants. I have no clue what these are. So this guy's doing really well. Don't know what his name is. And then, but this guy, he was so cute and he was doing so well. And now he's not, I don't know if I'm underwatering him or overwatering him. So because you guys were so helpful in my last garden video where I showed you my little uh, balcony garden. Maybe someone will recognize this plant and help me because I definitely need the help. And then I actually took out the driftwood from the Placidochromis tank. It's a driftwood that, in my opinion, looks kind of like a dragon. It's a really cool piece from both sides. And the bristle nose puckles that were in the are in the Placidochromis tank have been kind of munching it down. And I thought, you know, if I leave it long term, this is just going to go away. So I thought I'll bring it back out. And I'll kind of use it as a decorative piece. I'm not really sure where I'm going to put it. But it's hanging out here for now. I guess that's my, like, cool, natural corner of coolness. So that's sort of what's been happening in my fish room.